If you go like sit in his lap and smoke a do, I know it's a I, relaxing I, time. I, I, thought, I never realized it didn't send him last night. I, so I was like, oh, the- <laughs> I would sit in his lap. For sure. Abraham Lincoln is my Santa. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> what does Mocha want for <laughs> Christmas? Whatever you're hiding in your hat, big time. You guys, my uh, birthday is <laughs> coming up, and uh, I don't know everybody here. My birthday comes up before everybody. So. <laughs> No, no it isn't. Abraham Lincoln. I got you beat by a week. Just keep that in, just keep that in mind, Blewett. I got you keep, keep beat by a week. Mind. Copy of The Foreigner on DVD. <laughs> Foreigner is available on Blu-ray today. <laughs> From and VHS. <laughs> oh, nice. And welcome to the Down to Friend Podcast. How's it going, everybody? We are here. We are excited. We are live, almost. But we finally have, again... In the flash, Mocha here. Pleasure to be here, everybody. Out. So I'll always get to see you. And we also have some other losers, but we'll introduce them a little bit later. Uh, but I'm Lauren, and your host. Uh, and what we're going to be doing, as we normally do, is that our feature title tonight will be The Foreigner, featuring Jackie Chan, Pierce Brosnan, and the guy from Game of Thrones, Ruth Bolton. Um, I don't know his uh, actor's name, but I was like, oh, it's Ruth Bolton. That's what I said was to you in the theater. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, and I was the worst person to reference that. <laughs> no uh, idea. But before we get into all that, let's go a bit of a round table. I want to toss it over to the prettiest voice on air, the mouth of the South. Brylon, how's it going, man? Hey, how's it going this evening? Always good, always good. What you been uh, sipping on and what you been watching? Uh, this evening, I decided to pick up a bottle of wine. And I went to my favorite uh, spirit that okay. an Alma Negra Merlot blend. It's from Argentina. <laughs> uh, the first couple sips of this uh, wine are pretty chewy, which I got kind of bummed when I tasted the wine for the first time. <laughs> chewy, but, like <clears throat> chewy bum wine. <laughs> like it, I mean, it, it lingered in the mouth a bit. Not a not a fan of that. It's, mm, it's my classic move. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it does it it does have a nice grapey flavor to it, which I expect from wine. And so I think this would be a good, very top shelf. Like if a priest walked into a winery, he'd say, "Hey, you know what? This is great for communion. <laughs> this is the type of wine I'd rec- I would say it is. It's like a very solid communion wine. I have no idea what that reference I was raised I, Catholic I, and I still don't get what that means. <laughs> was there good wine for communion? The wine I had in communion was pretty decent. And I would say this is a level above that. Sure. Cool. <laughs> All right. You do you. Yeah. Uh, what have you been watching? Uh, recently I have been watching the new Curb Your Enthusiasm season. Uh, Larry David is back. Don't be afraid anymore. He's here to make us laugh, make us think, and make us uh, uh, just be annoyed by the simple things in life, which is what Larry David is great at doing. Um, I always love his show. I, I hope when I'm an old man, I'm pretty much like Larry David. That's what I want to be, where even though I don't have any role to play in society anymore, I want to be as annoying as hell to society. Just to make to keep uh, the younger generations on their toes, uh, but yeah, it's fantastic. What's really cool about this season is it's um, it's actually uh, kind of like uh, the uh, it's kind of like the earlier seasons. It's very subtle in its humor. Sometimes you can definitely see some setups for the overall story arc, but it's not as fantastical as like the last season when Larry was in New York uh, with like Michael J. Fox and stuff like that. Uh, which I think is makes it play a little bit better, and they're having Richard Lewis back as well, uh, and he's always great as his very like self-deprecating attitude to things. Cool. 
Well, as always, uh, I'm really glad to uh, have you on the show, and I'm glad to finally be back. I'm sorry that I missed the last episode. Thanks for uh, calling me out, guys. Uh, I hate you guys. Uh, Blew it. The Shredder. What you uh, what you sipping on there, and uh, what you been watching there, guy? Howdy ho. Uh, yeah, so I got some sweet uh, Celestial Seasons Fireside Vanilla Tea. Because uh, apparently I'm 700 years old and I want to go to bed after this. <laughs> so, you know, not like the 20 year old pass out, you know, drink 74 beers and then lay down in the gutter. This is like the 100 year old uh, roast up next to a dragon's den and wait for something. I don't know. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, anyways, it's very good tea. Uh, I'm a huge tea drinker. It is amazing when it starts to get cold out. Um, as well, far as what I'm watching. Know. What's up? I said a little hot toddies, nothing crazy, nothing delicious about that. A little tea, a little... No, little yeah, little I just, tea. honestly, I do straight up tea. Like, I, I just, I love a good tea. Love it. Um, anyways, what I'm watching, uh, I, it's, of course, Halloween season, so you got to watch a bunch of horror films. Uh, most recently, I saw The Babysitter, uh, starring uh-huh. Samara Weaving, who is, ironically, Hugo Weaving's uh, niece, I believe. Uh, uh-huh. So, uh, he... He got all the acting genes in the family, but she is prettier to look at, just barely. Um, so I'll call it a wash. Uh, it's pretty good. It, honestly, there was one scene that, like, I, I don't get necessarily scared or, like, jumpish. There was one scene that I was running around just screaming, this is so messed up, this is so messed up. Uh, yeah, it, not for, like, gore or anything. It was just, like, they just did a really good job preying on a lot of, a lot of, standard phobias in one condensed little scene. Uh, and so that, I thought that was really cool. Um, it was pretty funny too. It was more of a horror comedy, uh, obviously, you know, with the title of The Babysitter um, than a straight up comedy, but it it did its job. Definitely check it out. It, it's on Netflix. Nice. And that was The Babysitter? Is there anybody like in that movie? The stars anybody in particular? No, it's, a, it's like a seven-year-old kid is like the other big actor. Okay. And some cool. dude who never puts a shirt on. But that's pretty funny. They make fun of that. Sounds like my kind of movie. Yep. Well, as always, great to see you again. Uh, and I'm glad that you are back. Uh, we have a couple special guests. The man who literally runs the Fear Boners. We have Andrew Abbott in the house. How's it going, Andrew? Oh, good. Yeah, thanks everybody who's been listening to Fear Boners. I've been having a blast. Things are great. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, what you uh, what you sipping on right now? What you been watching? I'm sipping on a little red wine with a splash of Coca Cola in it because I'm a degenerate. Um, and then uh, I've been watching. Uh, I caught up on the uh, Walking Dead premiere, um, which a lot of people um, thought was kind of boring. I thought it is going to set the pace for a really good season. I'm not going to spoil anything. Uh, there was a great cameo by Weird Al Yankovic, <laughs> but. Um, other than that, I think, you know, people will enjoy it and uh, be prepared for a great season. Um, I also uh, <clears throat> have been watching um, Fox's The Gifted, which is the new X-Men TV series. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can only uh, do nothing but recommend that. Please, people should watch it because I have a feeling it doesn't have enough of a, a fan base yet, but it is really good for an X-Men series. I've been saying for years, X-Men needs to be on TV and it needs to be done right. That show so far, three episodes in, is amazing. Um and then to follow up something that I talked about in a previous Year Boners episode, I did finally finish watching um, Don't Kill It on Netflix, the demon hunting movie with Dolph Lundgren, and it is more like Don't Watch It. The rest of that movie was terrible. <laughs> the effects were bad, like the gore was bad, the acting was really bad. I loved Dolph Lundgren, but that movie, even for me, was hard to get through. So uh, I do uh, sort of regret what I said before, don't waste your time on it. If you want to play the mustache game, game, totally go ahead. But otherwise, that's what I've been watching. Mustache game is always amazing to play, though. So there's even the, the, the worst movies is possible. The mustache game could actually save it, so that's good. Yeah. Well, of course, I, I'm super glad to have you on. I really like getting some of your thoughts for just about any movie. I think you always think differently. And uh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, I have this special guest, literally one of the saltiest persons in the world. Mr. Peanut, you're introducing yourself first, or? Uh, no, I'm introducing you. Mr. Kyle, the better shredder, Kowalski. How's it going? 
so salty. I was gonna say you just <laughs> help yourself out with that one. Um, I'm doing well. It's good to be back. I've uh, been currently sipping on some Pinot Noir uh, with yourself and the other folks here, and then watching stuff. I've been watching too much in terms of television or movies. I've been mostly playing the new South Park game entitled The Fractured Butthole. And Pretty it's time. like playing an episode, so I suppose I'm watching and playing and experiencing all at once. Right. Which enhances the whole. What a great title for a game. Okay. Well, as always, I'm really glad to have you on. I'm super pumped. I think we talked about a bunch of things for getting more people on, so excited to have uh, two special guests. Uh, one of the people who traveled the farthest and the furthest to come is Mocha in the flesh. Mocha Mike, how's it going, man? Hey, everybody. Doing great. Good to see you. Doing good. Yeah. A little sweaty, but otherwise good. Yeah. You look good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So uh, what you sipping on and what you watching? So as for what I'm sipping on tonight, I'm drinking a delicate toilet wine. Um, this wasn't a wine brewed in the toilet or made in the toilet. It was simply served to me in the toilet. Are you sure? Yeah. yeah. Um, but the type of toilet wine it is, is La Gondola Chianti. Um, <laughs> it's my first Chianti that I've ever had. It's surprisingly salty. I'm not sh- sure if that's the wine or the toilet. But either way, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a salty, <laughs> or the company, it's a salty experience. Um, but it's not too bad. I probably won't go back to a campy, but hey, you can't look a gift toilet drink in the mouth. That's well, so you can't really act like you passively ended up with this. Like, you did get your own reception. Anyway! <laughs> <laughs> Before the illusion is broken, I will tell you guys about what I've been watching. <laughs> I've been watching... Um, actually, Warren, you'd be happy to hear this. I have just binged through Westworld, finally. Ooh. Oh my gosh, about I, time. I finally hopped on that train. Yes. Um, overall thoughts, really quick, 30 seconds. Overall thoughts, um, took me a while to get into it. I actually wasn't really digging it that much until, like, episode 8. And then wow. I finally became actually interested in it right around the end of episode 10. So, it did <laughs> just enough at the end to get me to watch the second season. Um... But, uh, but yeah, I have my own interest with it in general, but we'll sit down there here in order to cool. it's there, but not here. Well, well, yeah, we, can de- we definitely did, like, the intro to Westworld, and we did the um, halfway mark and then the ending of that, so we do have a few podcasts up for that, and you can definitely kind of check that out back in the uh, Apple Podcast app, but I think that was a lot of fun, especially just kind of going through that and really unpacking that show. I think we talked about it a lot, like, week to week, um, so it was definitely at least fun to, like, actually just talk about it, especially because it's supposed to be coming out next year yeah yeah it's a little bit delayed but can i I highlight what i'm most excited for season two is the fact that we might actually finally get to see a naked anthony hopkins i'm excited for that i mean who doesn't love a naked anthony hopkins you know naked no one has ever seen him naked he doesn't have any mirrors in his house he's a a never new yeah you heard it here he doesn't he doesn't just like cutoffs breaking news uh, I'm super award winning Anthony Hopkins and never knew. I never knew? I didn't, I didn't even realize that. Mr. Hopkins, if you listen to the podcast, please feel free to reach out to Sarah. Are you titling this episode? <laughs> Anthony Hopkins. Never knew. I mean, never knew is definitely going to be a hashtag on this one. So. <laughs> robot dude. Well, there you go. Speaking of robot dudes, he was in Transformers. Ooh. Garbage movie. Yeah. He played Bumblebee. <laughs> if I remember No, I'm pretty sure that was Bernie Mac. No, no, no. Oh, come no, on. Bumblebee, he had the suit scene. Oh, yeah. yeah. He was a Grimlock. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Warren, your host for this evening. Uh, I am currently also sipping on the same Chianti as Mocha is. Um, I definitely wouldn't... Uh, this is not very good. This is not very good wine. No. Yeah, this is not very good Chianti. And I'm kind of bummed that this is like your first sort of introduction to it. It doesn't live up to the standards of toilet wine that I'm familiar with. Well, I mean, this is pure... <laughs> this, this is great C toilet the wine. The connoisseur you are, yeah. 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 You're, you're Disappointment is understandable. Yeah. It's not that top shelf toilet wine. <laughs> <laughs> that great, that great yeah. A B. He's shelf all about that toilet wine. tank wine, the top shelf of the toilet. Make sure you get there. <laughs> yeah. Give me that upper decker wine. Ooh, <laughs> nothing wrong with the hashtag upper decker wine. There you go. We're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> make a new winery. Uh, we, is this a thing that needs to happen? I will. I will absolutely shop at upper decker wine. Right? I will grow grapes in our backyard yes. and then stomp them with my own feet to make upper decker wine. I would watch you do all of that. Okay. Yep. All right. Here we go. You're already uh, first. So, yes, I am sipping on the same wine. Uh, we're going to finish that bottle and move on. Uh, as for what I was watching, I watched two movies. Um, watched a couple other things, too, but uh, I'm also, like, slowly working my way through this abstract. It's, like, a design sort of documentary on Netflix. It's, it looks gorgeous, and this is actually one of the 
uh, titles that are um, actually in 4K, which is pretty pretty awesome um, on Netflix. So it's actually pretty cool. And I just love the fact that they really kind of they go through everything. They go through everywhere. They talk about designers, architects, like costume designers, artists, uh, and it's really really fun. I, I'm really excited just to kind of get into it just to see somehow how these people think because each and every pe- person that they uh, introduce. Yeah, they, they're always, like, very quirky for some reason, and it's very interesting just looking at some artistic um, background there. Um, also saw, so I did see the Lego movie Ninjago. It's kind of bummed that uh, that movie was not very good. Uh, out of all the, uh, I, and I love Lego movie number one. I loved Lego movie Batman. Like, those are, like, up there. I had so much fun with just about everything. Like, was hoping that they would do something like this with this here, and it just wasn't very good just doesn't really make any sense too much the voice of acting was funny but overall the, the movie itself kind of just like fell flat that's probably why you never heard anything from it um so i was kind of bummed about that lego movie ninjago but it was still kind of fun they had a, a weird like kind of twists and turns in it too it's, so it's funny I still they, have to watch it but watch it for free it's they good. didn't they didn't really like market that at all uh, i think they did i mean a little the, Batman, yeah, like around the Lego Batman was out, they were already hyping up that movie to be out around, or coming out in like October or September Yeah, but they never, uh, in all yeah, the they were expecting here. their built-in audience to go to the theater too, which is all the kids watching the TV show. Yeah, I think the problem was they were sort of working on an IP that's theirs, it wasn't like they were working with a DC property or a Marvel property, and then they had to probably cater more towards kids who were actually playing with the toys. So the other movies sort of benefit from the fact that they can also cater to like adults who enjoy Lego or Batman. Yeah, franchises. I can see that, but like the original Lego movie, like established the fact that we ha- there's a real world in the Lego world, and they like live together in the same world. Whereas this movie starts off, he's like, "I'm going to tell you a story about like a legend that happened long ago." But we start as hum- they were like humans, like in a like live action. Then they go to <laughs> Lego, and so I'm like. I thought this was the same world. You just broke that, but you just... Yeah, yeah it's kind of weird. I also have to look at who's the director because it was like all over the place. Yeah. So definitely wasn't... Steven a, Spielberg. No, it wasn't. <laughs> Steven Spielberg. <laughs> yeah. yeah sorry, I was the uh, director. But that was the exciting movie I'm really excited to talk about was this is a movie called Professor Martin and the Wonder Woman. And this movie is awesome. Uh, I think uh, Meg just randomly we went to go see it when we were in Orlando. Uh, I said, "Hey, pick a movie," and I was really nervous because she doesn't really have a great taste in movies. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> uh, but she picked this movie, and oh, went in there completely blind. She had no idea what the movie was about. Oh, it's a boss. Uh, it, it's awesome. So yeah. the movie really kind of so it's, apparently it's based out of Massachusetts in Boston, I think in Harvard actually. And there's this professor professor who um, he created the uh, lie detector. And he also created the comic character Wonder Woman, and so you you see what's happening on with his life, what's happening going on with his relationship with his wife, and there's also potentially a mistress and how that all ties together to it. Like obviously there's no spoilers. Cause I really want people to go see this movie, but nobody's really talking about this movie, and it's actually not being shown in a lot of places. Um, so it's Professor Markson and the Wonder Woman. I'm super pumped to have like we have a sp- probably a small mini discussion talking about this, and we can definitely kind of uh, expand out a little bit later, but. The movie is very enjoyable, and I would love to have more and more people to kind of talk about some of these quote-unquote like taboo scenarios and taboo situations that sometimes people feel a bit uncomfortable talking about. But if we continue to make worse movies like this, it makes it a little bit more like get it out because it's, you shouldn't be ashamed of what you are and like what you do. Uh, and I think that's a really uh, great way to like make art, make movies. So, cool. so that's what I've been watching. So I'm pumped, guys. The Foreigner. It was directed by Martin Campbell, the same director from Green Lantern. <laughs> oh, is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, Goldeneye. He did hey. Goldeneye. Yeah, I know. And Goldeneye. <clears throat> so, wait, wait, so... And well, that Casino back, Royale. If they gave him yeah. Jackie Chan yeah. a Green Lantern ring, this movie would have been 100 times better. That would have been yeah. dope as hell. So, yeah, this, <laughs> this director has done some pretty good movies. Uh, you know, he's, like we said... Golden Eye, I think that was a, I, I think that thing was a success. That was a pretty good movie. It's um, a video game. But he also, yeah, for sure. That was Probably the first sure. Pierce Brosnan Bond movie, right? But Casino Royale was a great movie. That was a really good movie. James Bond movie. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, but uh, it was strange because it's like, oh, I see why, just looking at his last four films or like the featured ones on his actual filmography, it's like, oh, okay, 
this is all over the place, but all those other movies are, are at least four or five. And he did Edge of Guard Darkness, too, so it looks like his work has been all over the place. But I, I'm excited to talk about, like, uh, before we get into the whole spoiler section, what are some thoughts that people had just kind of popping and going into this movie? And uh, did you watch the trailer? Did you not watch the trailer? Did you Were you excited about watching the trailer? I know some some people were talking about this is like Take In but with Jackie Chan. Like, let's unpack some of these thoughts before we get into our, um, our spoiler section. So... I'm going to toss it over to Abbott. What do you think? Yeah. So uh, with that, I did watch the trailer a, a few times. It did pop up a lot. But um, I always loved Jackie Chan growing up. I've seen all of his films. Uh, and I definitely went into this thinking it was going to be something different than it was. But I enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I know it's a bit of a, a little bit of a darker movie. You do get that tone from the trailer and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I was sort of prepared for that. Um, and it was kind of cool to see James Bond and Jackie Chan in a movie. So I'm, I'm, this whole review, I'm just going to call Pierce Cross and James Bond, so be prepared. That's right. I mean, he did a pretty solid Irish accent, I thought. Oh, he uh, but, Irish. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <He cries. laughs> yeah, I had to look that up. I, I, I didn't know. I yeah, I, I, I thought he was British. I thought he was British. Nah. <laughs> that but he, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I guess he does a pretty good everything else accent, because... I never heard of an Irish actor. Uh, in yeah. fact, Daniel Craig is one of the first truly British James Bonds. I thought Daniel Craig was Irish. No. Nope. He's British. <laughs> well, Irish people <laughs> <are> not. <laughs> oh, really? I can draw a map for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Ireland, Wisconsin. There you go. Uh, so, uh, Blue, any, uh, any thoughts going into this movie? No, I thought it looked like taking with Jackie Chan. Uh, you know, if they could re retake the magic of the first taken, I would have been okay with that. And so that's that's really what hooked me. All right, Riley? I had some more thoughts. I mean, I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, hey, cool. Uh, take it with Jackie Chan. I wonder how Jackie will handle this. Uh, because, like, his fighting was is always, like, very over-choreographed and very fancy. It's very eye-catching. And so to put him in a darker movie, be interesting to see how he uh, reacts to that. Uh, Boca. So going into this film, I had seen one tra trailer, which gave you the same impression I gave everybody else. Oh, cool, Taken, but with Jackie Chan. Um, there were a couple of red flags in the trailer that made me think, oh, you know, I don't know how I'm going to feel about something going into it. Um, I'll talk more about how I actually felt about it later on. Um, but I was just excited about seeing Jackie Chan in something again. But it's been a while since so I've seen him in a new movie, in particular one that 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 had a focus on martial arts. Yeah. So like that alone like got, got me committed to going to see it. Yeah, I mean, like, I just, talking about the Lego movie is strange. I just I happened to watch that the same week. I was like, man, I haven't seen them in a while. And I saw him in the Lego movie, like, wow, he looks pretty old. I wonder if that's just, like, him or maybe, like, some makeup or something like that. I'm not sure. And watching him in this movie, I was like, wow, he looks really old, actually, in this movie. Like, oh, maybe it's not the makeup, but could be. Uh, obviously, I don't watch the trailer, so I went into this kind of, kind of blind. I heard it was kind of, like, taken, and I heard that, it was, like, something happened with his daughter sort of thing. So I wasn't necessarily sure, um, but uh, yeah, I, I was just pretty pumped just to see. Like, it's it's interesting just to see, especially what's happening. Like a more grounded film, I think you can get that from the first few minutes of it. Um, just like the introduction and what's happening. So, uh, pretty pumped. So we are going to take a quick break, intermission. Uh, we will be back, and we're going to give you our full spoiler, uh, actual review of The Foreigner, directed by Martin Campbell, featuring Jackie Chan and Pierce Irishman Brazen. See you soon. <laughs> I didn't know he was iron. <laughs> for joining the Down Upfront Podcast as we review The Foreigner. We're pumped, we're excited, we give a bit of a mission, and now we're going to really unpack this movie, talk about some wins, talk about some criticisms, and then we're going to end with our overall grades and kind of next steps for us and where we can find more of our work. 
So I'm going to toss it over to the prettiest person I know. Kyle, what are some wins that you have about the corner? Wins, it was good to see Jackie Chan back in a feature film. And to see him that it didn't feel like he lost a step. He did look like he had aged, but at the same time, once he did like get into things, like he embraced the darker tone of the film and really fit in with that really well. And when it came time for him to do his thing, he did. He kicks ass. And not in the over-the-top way. Instead, it had a more of a grit to it. It did look like it was like, yeah, this is an older guy. He's still got it, but he's taking the bumps while he's going for it. Yeah. I mean, I like that it was just grounded about that. Like, I think one of the things I just enjoy is when the quote-unquote hero, right? Because that was also very ambiguous and vague. Um I like when they take some lumps. I like when you like start getting beat up, and like he really got fucked up in this movie a lot. And uh, even for the fact that there's even one scene that you see him heating up the knife and cauterizing his wound that's on his chest from a bullet, or his arm from being shot by a um, from a gun. Um, I like those things like that. It makes it like a little bit more real. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoy that those kind of scenes, those parts, and the dude was fucking like sleeping in the woods for like two, three days. Like that's that's pretty crazy. Um, yeah, I'll go. I thought I thought that I have to applaud Jackie Chan for breaking out of his normal like comedy action routine. Uh, you know, it's it's been a while. Like you know, I mean, he did a couple like traditional like films in China. You know, that were more serious minded. But basically, from the Drunken Master on, he's been mixing comedy and kung fu. Uh, so it, it was nice to see him go strictly dramatic with a little bit of the martial arts thrown in there. Now, I have to say, like, I applaud the effort. I also, I don't know if he's necessarily has the chops to pull it off anymore. Um, there was definitely some times when it, it felt a little bit, a little bit forced and like he didn't quite have that range to fully, you know, the obvious, the obvious one is taken. And like, I think Liam Neeson has the better dramatic range than Jackie Chan does at this point in their careers. Um, that being said, God, applaud the guy, applaud the guy for taking risks. Well, I'm going to toss it over to Abbott. What's some wins you got for uh, the corner? Yeah, totally. Um, I think it was nice to see, uh, sort of along the same lines of what Kyle said, Jackie Chan in like a more serious role, besides like some of his police story movies that have tended to be more darker the further they've gone along. Yeah. Um, but he has said things like, oh, I don't like using guns in movies, or I don't like having gunfights in movies, but he definitely has some pretty badass gunfights. You know, you see Jackie Chan in the movie, you're like, I want to see him kick some ass, and he does kick some ass, but he also, you know, uses guns, and provides his weapons, and, you know, he does his thing, and he is old in this movie. They definitely make him out to be really old, um, and I think that's sort of cool, too, is that, you know, nowadays we see so many movies where it's these, like, young, cut, beautiful people, like, surviving these crazy, <laughs> these crazy events, or these, like, like traumatic events um, in these action films, and to see, like, you know, an actor like Jackie Chan, who is in his, like, 60s now, still doing it, still making it work, and still being a total badass, like, I love it. Yeah, I mean, it was just, I think it's the one of the great things we like about it, the thing even, like, we even alluded to it before, is that we like seeing him, like, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter, like, what you win, but, like, it's gonna be interesting, it's gonna be entertaining, and now this is the more, <clears throat> like, the, a, a very, very drastically different role, but it's, I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I just enjoy seeing him. Like, I, I think it'd be interesting to see, like, you know, if we were to recast somebody else, like, who could necessarily do this? Like, maybe Jet Li? Like, just thinking, like, old people that still have, like, really good, like, moves. Like, hey, I don't know. Uh, but maybe Keanu Reeves? I don't know. Um, but I think it'd be kind of interesting. Keanu Reeves is trying to. I do <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible with uh, geography, I guess. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, anything else? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was a win for me, is hearing you refer to Keanu Reeves as Chinese person. I'm pretty sure he's Chinese. <laughs> I've got to double check my sources. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to uh, Mocha. Some yeah. wins, yeah? Yeah, so, um, so, so one thing that really stuck out to me about this movie is that oftentimes in any situation like this where you have a person who was justified in their vengeful approach to taking down a villain who's harmed them and their family. Typically, that villain is like mustache twirling or completely and utterly evil and just does like awful things throughout. And what was interesting about this film was that they actually took the approach of portraying um, Pierce Brosnan's character as not someone who was outwardly evil, just somebody who was trying to keep together 
um, the government that, that he and his former terrorist friends had formed uh, without without letting the actions of a rogue cell like tear all that apart. Mm-hmm. And the characters in the, in the movie often debate back and forth whether or not he actually has a better interest of the Ireland and UK relationship in mind, or if he's just trying to maintain his own status in society um, and within the government. But it was more than just him being the evil guy, killing people and doing bad things. Um, and I think that, that that was a really cool approach. Um, and it created this sort of this weird tension between Jackie Chan and, and, and Chris Brown's characters, where Jackie Chan was completely and utterly like tunnel vision focused on getting Pierce Brosnan to give him information, and Pierce Brosnan didn't have that information, but had lived a life that wasn't exactly spotless. Um, so it created this like this really interesting uh, element for the movie that I wasn't expecting, and I was uh, I was uh, glad they did it. Um, also, in terms of Jackie Chan's approach to going after Pierce Brosnan, he, so a lot of times in movies like this, well, let's take, for example, the most direct comparison, which is taken, um, a good guy loses a family member or a loved one, and they get sent into a murderous uh, rage, and they go out and they kill every single person that gets in their path in the pursuit of dark justice. Um, for Jackie Chan's character, he didn't exactly do that. Instead, he became a terrorist to that man himself. He spent the entire movie blowing up his belongings, um, his like, ho- like rooms in his house, Jesus. his office, things like that. Never actually like trying to like, kill as many people as possible. Sometimes people got caught up in it, but really he was just trying to stress um, Pierce Brosnan's character until he would give him the information he needed so he could find the actual killers. Yeah, um, mess with a man's toilet. <laughs> what was that? Never mess with a man's toilet. <laughs> never, never. <laughs> um, Especially if that's where you keep your wine. Yeah. <laughs> But it was cool seeing uh, seeing him take on the role of like a guerrilla, like these guerrilla tactics and this uh, and a terroristic approach to kind of getting just giving just desserts to the person that he thought was responsible for his daughter's explosion. Carrot cake. Carrot cake. Mm-hmm. I love carrot cake. Okay. Wait, cool. was there a gorilla in this movie? That I, <laughs> I know. Like yeah. when he said the girl, I was like, did we go? Was this a uh, harambe tactic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just desserts. Just like we we'll can't use that term. Um, but yeah, so so it was interesting. I felt that they made a lot of um, unique choices there uh, on the side of the uh, in terms of their their relationship and how that played out. Um, similarly to what was mentioned earlier, it was really cool to see a movie about terrorists that wasn't about brown people. Um, yeah, I was a big fan of that. <laughs> we had a two hour break there, but um, but no, yeah, it was cool seeing this seeing, um, this kind of like history lesson about or uh, re- reflected in. In the history of Ireland and the UK, which has a very, very robust history of shitty acts being done upon one another, um, up to a pretty, very recent time in our history, and that is something that's really overlooked when it comes to like, TVs, movies, whatever from entertainment that focuses on them. Um, so, props to them for just looking for new avenues in which to tell um, this sort of story that we've already seen portrayed in like four or five of the movies. Yep, I mean that, I, that's actually a great call, and I'm glad that this was a pretty contained movie that really wanted to tell their own story, like, doesn't talk about, like, really anything outside of the UK and Ireland. Um, mentions kind of sort of, like, Vietnam and, like, wars and stuff like that that he's, like, fought in, but he also talked about a bit of, like, I don't, I think they kind of touched on, like, PTSD and the shit, just what, you know, Jackie Chan's, Jackie Chan's character kind of went through. Uh, but I do like the fact that they, like, they talk about the people who bombing and the bombers just so happen to be, like, these Irish people, like, just, like, white people, mm-hmm. or just for lack of a better term. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was uh, I thought that was very interesting. I, I think one of the things that I enjoy, like, uh, like even going off, I want to hop on um, what Mocha was talking about. Like this man made a bomb out of like some uh, what was it? A water bottle? Sort of it's it's, it's two two bottles of Poland Spring lemon seltzer duct yeah. tape and a string. <laughs> it's gonna be a small. He just exploded and a and cigarette. Hold on, that's how you read models. Yeah, right? correct. I was like. <laughs> Oh shit! All right, he doesn't. He doesn't fuck around. He he, he gave him a chance, and uh, you know I like the fact that you know we'll we'll get into the criticism a little bit later. But I at least like the fact that he tried to go and to be like as diplomatic as possible. He tried to do it the correct way. He went through, said that he'll wait. You know, he went through the actual um, uh, government in the UK. They said they can't help him, so he went directly to the source that he thought was the uh, Pierce Brosnan's character. He said that he'll wait. And he said, "Hey, you make this right. Make this right. Make, make this right." To the point where he's like, all right, well, if you're not going to do it, then I'm going to take matters to my own hands. So 
I at least like the fact that even though this is a movie that we know is going to be some sort of action movie, there's going to be explosions and battles and stuff like that, there is still a, 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 a sense of, hey, I'm trying to ha- handle this peacefully without violence. Let's at least have that as an, um, like a, something that we're going to try to do. It may not work, but at least show me that you actually put an effort into like solving this without any sort of violence. So I think that's also also, also very impactful. I, I like that point of it. I like the Pierce Brosnan's character because I think they really tried to um, flush out. They had a bit of an arc for him, especially when he was like in, like you know found out that his wife was cheating on him, like as he was cheating on his wife, and the woman he was cheating on just so happened to be in the organization. So he she was also being planted there to like make sure that if he uh, like everything gets, gets back to him. So he was at one point was almost innocent, but then that moved away. Um, so I, I did like that aspect of it. They, they at least had a bit of a character um, development for his character. It was weak, but it was still there, and it was a, it was, it was a try for that, so it was pretty cool. Um, Jackie Chan kicking ass was also pretty cool. I love the fact that he was, like, going out of the... He jumped out the window and then, like, pulled him back in. Like, that entire, like, scene was actually kind of pretty cool. Um, so yeah, so it was just fun. It was like there was a lot of movies. There's a lot of points in this movie that were just kind of fun. And I, I think it had like, a lot of good wins um, from it. And uh, yeah, so let's keep on going. I want to toss it over to uh, Bradley. What do you guys for wins? Yeah, so the kind of mindset I had going into this film was like um, that uh, I did a little research and found out that this movie is based on a book called The Chinaman, written by Stephen Leather. Which automatically sounds like a novel written by a porn star. So what are you going to expect out of that? Um, and so I was expecting like, yeah, this might be just like a dumb, fun action movie. And it is a dumb, fun action movie. But it's got some really interesting twists to it as well. Uh, like I mentioned before, the whole idea of like bringing the IRA and the, the backdrop being this... Um, having the modern IRA deal with their past, even though they put down technically put down their weapons 20 years ago that you find like when they group up that you're seeing uh, things like, Oh, they still have kind of like their cell organization uh, structure still in place. Like seeing that boardroom, we have half the people in suits, which are probably the public faces and the other half in uh, more like Adidas jumpsuits, which are kind of the guys behind the scenes uh, still doing some more IRA style things. Uh, and knowing that they still kept on to their weapon stores, even though they stopped using their weapons for anything. Um, I thought that was a really interesting twist to add to this is like, see that show that internal struggle that like, even though you may put down your weapons and want to turn a new leaf, uh, some people you're not going to have everybody agree with you. And some people are going to keep those feelings of, uh, betray and look at that as a betrayal going forward. Um, I also really loved Pierce Brosnan. I thought he was chewing scenery left and right, and he put on the most. He made his Irish accent as strong as possible to just uh, give off like he's a very strong, stern politician. But at the same time, he's trying to see that he has the people's um, uh, he has the people uh, in his conscience and trying to do the good thing. And even though he is individually has some of uh, his own ills like cheating on his wife and uh, still being kind of connected to more of the darker sides of the IRA. Uh, it's a, uh, it's, he actually balanced that really well. I thought um, also Jackie did a great job as everybody mentioned that uh, having him fight where he, uh, where his choreography wasn't the sh- the show, show star it was just more of the mood and what you got out of the uh, the energy of the fight, the bread and bed and breakfast where he kicks a hole in the roof, and then everybody's jumping through that tiny ass hole in the roof and still fighting in that tiny little space. It was really impressive to see that, and just seeing him MacGyver like that bomb in the bathroom and uh, having the punji sticks in the um, in the uh, in the forest, uh, and just all the different kind of inventive with is like a different side like Jackie can do uh, some other types of action rather than just uh, use his hands and feet to uh, punch people and it was also really good just to uh, look out for who from Game of Thrones or Vikings would show up next so it was really good to see Bruce Bolton pop up here 
Uh, yeah. And then you had some uh, people from Vikings pop up and actually uh, show up, and uh, some side characters as well. Now I thought the twist at the end <clears throat> was really interesting because it was more of just like it was more of a personal vendetta than an overarching like let us uh, let us to be a terrorist organization type of thing. It was the ultimate uh, motivation was his wife still did not uh, did not appreciate what he did to her brother, and that sometimes even that simple of a motivation can lead to some very serious dangerous things. Yeah, I mean, it is a little crazy, though, that, you know, <laughs> he had their wife murdered. Like, that's kind of, oof, that's a bit fucked up, but all right. Yeah. You know, if that's the ultimate, cut, like, if that's the ultimate way to, like, say hi in your face, like, that's kind of uh, fucked up. Ironically, ironically, um, they, she was worried that he had grown too soft. Yeah. And weirdly yeah. enough, he proved that he hadn't by murdering her. <laughs> You know, in his right hand, almost like his right hand man that he knew for years too, he straight up murdered that dude uh, because yep. of like no loose ends sort of thing. So. Yeah, and he, yeah, it's and, definitely a family affair. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's how that is. Uh, Brian, I I have to say, I mean, I I think that most of the time, like Jackie Chan does do because he's gotten to star in a whole bunch of different styles. You know, from uh, cruising Las Vegas and Rush Hour to you know, uh, like the the Western expansion in Shanghai, uh, was it Nights and all this fun stuff. So he gets to play with a bunch of eras in locations. I actually say he's probably one of the more refreshing people. You're right, this was definitely a new, this is gonna sound weird, but it was a new setting for him to be in, which in fact for him as a person is nothing new. Because he's always setting up, uh, Jackie Chan that is, setting himself in like new ways that he can whoop some butt. Uh, so you're right, you know, being like a U.S. trained Vietnamese Chinese soldier uh, was definitely like a new experience. Uh, but we've seen him kick butt for, you know, going back millennia as, you know, an ancient warrior. So, you know, it's you just got to take it that he's going to come up with new ways to, to ragdoll people. Yeah, Jackie Chan definitely kicks butt. But I mean, usually in his movies, it's like, oh, let me grab this well-timed uh, ladder that's right here and spin it around and grab you by the neck with it. Well, Here, I mean, it feels a little bit more realistic because he's got to kind of make those moments happen for he's, him. He still did have that one moment where he uh, flung out of the roof and he grabbed a little pipe and did his little spin around on that. He but, did, yeah. yeah, and he took his jacket off and wrapped that around someone's hand <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah, And, I mean, it was definitely a more simplification of what he's used to doing. Um, but it was really cool to see him, like, still take the bumps as well and it not just be just a clean all right cool uh then blew it round us off for the wins yeah i guess i'd say for the last thing most of my wins have already been uh stated um i would like to say that it, it felt as a, a fan of uh tom clancy robert ludlum uh type books it was like nice to see what felt like a, a spy thriller you know, kind of back in the mainstream where, where, like, I'm a huge fan of these. In about two weeks, I'm going to absolutely lose myself when Thor Ragnarok comes out. Uh, but it feels like a lot of the action movies we're getting right now are, are mostly just, like, superhero films or they have some other fantastical element to them. Uh, and it was really nice to see just, like, a very grounded, with big stars in it, um, you know, an action movie that... that also didn't necessarily rely. One thing I'd say is the, the action scenes weren't even that, like, elongated. You know, they were basically, like, quick cuts, kind of like how people fight in real life, where it's, like, no one has these 30-minute long gun battles, like, in John Wick that end up with both characters hand-to-hand -hand fighting for 30 minutes and then falling down a flight of stairs and popping up and still beating each other senseless. So it, it's really nice to see, like, an actual the actual limits of the human body instead of just superhumans. Um, and because Very of that... Like the callback that we uh, said with um, Atomic Blonde, I, I got a lot of sense of that in that movie. Uh, yeah. And this one too, like, just shit was as gritty and real. Yeah. Uh, and, like, you can see, like, how exhausted and, like... People, you have to like change your tactics up. I think that was very, very right. Amazing. No, it's ex it's even more uh, exasperated on that. Where like, 
most of it was, and this is, I think a little bit of the marketing, they tried to shift it away from like, see Kung Fu master Jackie Chan to please see a dramatic actor, Jackie Chan, uh, where like part of me was a little bit disappointed that like they didn't go on for longer. Cause I can know what Jackie Chan can and still can, you know, was able to do and can still do um, where they did a really decent job at like switching the focus to a spy thriller rather than a straight up beat him up. You know, especially when he's like, ship everyone up from Belfast. I was like, all right, here we go. Here's like 200 mooks coming up that Jackie Chan is just gonna karate chop his way through. Uh, and they did a good job of saying like, no, this isn't that type of mu uh, movie. We're just gonna, we're, he has to play tactically rather than just fist flying. Yeah, I mean, like I, w I was getting a bit nervous at some of those components that they were just gonna keep throwing people at them and the same exact thing was happening. And you, was, you could also see that there was like, hey, we tried three, four people, that didn't work. So we're going to try eight people, that didn't work. All right, let's try like 15 or 20 people, that didn't work. All right, let's try a specialist. And we're only going to send one specialist. That has to work, right? And I was like, all right, guys, please stop stop doing this. <laughs> like, don't don't follow the same trope. Like, don't do that. Uh, but, you know, they, you know it, it just what happened. But they at least kind of resolved that much differently, too. Um, yeah. So cool. Yeah. Uh, any other like last and wins before we get into our criticism? Yeah, can I uh, add just the fact that um, going into it, you expect Jackie Chan to be like a kung fu star, yeah. but otherwise he was like savage as fuck. Like he not only was like a survivalist, and like you find out that his background is like army based and special forces based, but then the one scene that I thought was hilarious, I think Kyle and I were laughing in the theater, was when he's getting set up to like get. Uh, James Bond in that cafe, and then you realize he's beating his mistress, and Jackie Chan just sends him a picture of them smooching, and he's like, I'm gonna send it out. Like, he just straight up tmz that shit. For sure. Like, that was just, <laughs> he was trying to blow up his spot so hard, he didn't even have to throw a punch. That was awesome. Oh, oh, one thing I'd love to, I'd love to say is they absolutely got the, the trope right of, like, the old person rocking a five-year-old phone on an operating system that was, like, four years old. I'm pretty sure that was an iPhone 5 running iOS 8. For sure. Like, it's you know, like, yup, nailed it. Brought, well, he brought a brand new iOS, like, he brought a brand new phone. I'm like, wait. That did it too. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> well, that was, that was like him breaking out of like the old man stereotype, but at least they nailed it at the beginning when they're like, oh, this old guy can't do anything. I thought that was funny. So, now that we talked about our wins, let's get into some things that, you know, there may be some things that didn't quite work with this movie. Uh, I'm going to toss it over. I want to actually start with Brylin and say, Brylin, what are some things that just didn't quite work for the foreigner for you? Yeah, so even though like I kind of turned my brain off for this movie, I, I knew that the plot was not going to be good. Uh, that there's still some plot inconsistencies that, hey, maybe these should be addressed. Uh, first and foremost, um, the biggest plot point I had was, I wasn't quite sure, was Jackie Chan a Chinese Special Forces soldier or an American Special Forces soldier. They didn't really uh, clear that up. I mean, Jackie explains it one way, and the dossier tells it another way. And I'm like, <laughs> I mean, his back, his backstory makes a, no sense at all. You, you know that he's Special Forces. He's either fought with, for China or for America, got kidnapped at, or got taken prisoner at Saigon, and then somehow Shanghai parent, uh, pirates yeah. uh, kill his first two daughters. Ta thai and pirates. I'm, thai. Was All it Thai pirates? Yeah, so it's like 19, or different, Singapore? 19 or, different countries came involved in this thing. Yeah, yeah. He's been through a lot of shit, man. <laughs> yeah, I can feel for the guy, but, I mean, have some clarity of how this is actually happening. How many how? pirates is the next movie he's making with Owen Wilson? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so good. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I mean, how many car bombs does it, does it take to want to actually look into the past of this dude? Because it was probably like over halfway through the movie that we finally got the exposition dump that we've been waiting for. Like, wait, hold on. How, how does he know how to fight that way? Oh, it was like, so strange. You know, yeah, like, yeah. You know like, what, what, what's happening in this movie right now? I kind of yeah, I I wish. I think, like, in some ways, I mean, it would probably been a better movie if you totally took his backstory out. Right. Like, I you know, said. This is an old Chinese guy from a restaurant that was upset at his daughter. I mean, you could use even the same, I have a certain set of skills line that 
uh, Liam Neeson hat. Yeah. Keep it as simple as that. Don't make this list of different things and could convolute it so much. Because we don't like it. Would have been nice to see in the, in that particular exposition file, right? That dossier. If it was like literally, he opens it up and everything is blacked out. Like just everything. Like you don't. We don't know at all. Like he dig all this digging just to find that literally everything's blacked out. Still keep the scene, but he's just like flipping through, flipping through, flipping through, saying like, "Oh shit!" Like what? We don't even know what we're dealing with. Keep it ambiguous. Yeah. Keep it vague. So we don't like literally that at that point he can do whatever he wants. Like you can like the director and the writer can write in the fact that he knows how to make every fucking bomb known to mankind. Like he knows how to do all this stuff because we don't need to have that backstory. But the moment that you become specific about it, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of leading questions about, well, this doesn't really make any sense. Like why you, why you explain one thing, but not the other. It was kind of confusing. Rather. Yeah. Um, Mike, did you have something you wanted to say? I was going to agree with you that I wish they didn't explain his backstory. It would have made more sense of just like a, you know, you, an air of mystery, you know? Yeah. It made him seem a bit more lethal as well, I think. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, I thought it was just really odd how Jackie still had it out for Pierce Brosnan, even after he took out the rogue uh, IRA cell. That, um, I mean, I... I can see it being like just a matter of perception. Jackie Chan read that newspaper and said, hey, this guy is an IRA politician. He's sitting fine. Um, that he uh, he has to know something about what's going on. Uh, but um, at the same time, I'm like, uh, do you really? I mean, and it could have been just like Jackie's like, you know what? Everybody's going to take it out on my, from my perspe- perspective. Um even, even he's guilty just for not being able to give me information directly. And that could have been all the motivation he needed for that. But I'm looking at it and like, okay, logically, if we look at this, I mean, is Pierce Brosnan's politician really guilty of what these rogue IRA element, what this rogue IRA element did? I mean, maybe he, he was like a guilty by association at most just because he was blinking one of them. And well, that could be it. Yo, that's, uh, that's but a, I did, that's, that's I, exactly I did not it. pick up on anything that directed with that same rogue element, yeah. even though he was IRA and he's definitely an edgy <laughs> dude and done some bad things. Was he, was it really, um, was he definitely had to say a guilty party in this? Bro, I mean, Jack, Jackie Chan's character got it wrong. So, uh, yeah, and I think that, Pierce Brosnan got screwed because he got it wrong. No, he did. Yes. So, what happened? What happened was, uh, what happened was, uh, he took the pictures in the cafe. He had no idea who that girl was, and then she, he saw her for the first time in the kill house. Um, yep. And so, at that point, he put it together, and so he thought that they were working together, and that he she had connections because he never interrogated the girl about what her actual connection was um, to Pierce Brosnan's character, and so he completely got it wrong. And Pierce Brosnan basically just like saw the cards on the wall, figured this dude spent the last five days hunting him. He's not going to be able to talk his way out of it, and then decided to hit the send button. He was completely a, a casualty of coincidence. Right. Pierce Brosnan has a line in this movie when he's talking to his right hand man, I think a scene before he just kills him, that he says, I told you guys to hit some financial places. I didn't tell you to kill some innocent people. So he was right. Jackie Chan in the end was correct because Pierce Brosnan was in on it. He just didn't know exactly who had done the act. He was still like, um, he, he wasn't completely not guilty. But he at least knew that the bombings were happening, and he knew that this stuff was happening, even because he knew that the guy, he, he knew where the bombs was coming from, from that guy's dumb. No, and he it, figured that, that, yeah, he that, figured that, that out was way totally later. Correct. I mean, Pierce Brosnan was trying to find out who was behind this. I mean, complete honesty on his part is like, he's trying to find out who the hell is doing this. And, and at the end, we do discover his wife is the one that's actually that gave the order, that pulled the trigger to say, hey, you tell this little group, go and cause some mayhem because I'm pissed off at my husband. 
Right. And, that and, was it. And Jackie Chan got it wrong because he he figured out who the girl was and then just made the connection that, oh, because she was sleeping with Pierce Brosnan, he's connected somehow. I don't think, again, I mean, I, I guess that line again confuses me because when he said particularly to him, like, you guys remember that line? Warren, like, yeah. Warren hey, you're not... You're not so wrong. I think he was reminiscing on the past of when they were no, wrong. They no, Warren's, Warren's non-civilian areas. Warren's so. not wrong. He definitely told him to do something, but he told him to fight it as a 21st century battle to to take away their funds rather than fight it like the 80s, you know, and actually like bomb them. So, so Pierce Brosnan's character is not innocent in any regards. That being said, he genuinely had no idea what was going to happen. Once the command was given out that like, hey, we're going to start some trouble again. Okay. And, and I think it's literally the only reason that they were, that he was there is because he had that, he figured out who the girl was, you know, and then it, it was just like a weird coincidence, which I, we could talk about that, but that she pretty much fit into every other part of everyone's story. I thought that was a pretty cool reveal, though, because I was like, why is this girl... Like, I thought at first she wasn't important. Then they're talking about the reporter. I was like, who the fuck cares about this reporter? I, I don't get why they're showing her. Is he going to meet Jackie Chan? Yeah. And then I was, I was like, oh, okay. that's I, Cool. You got me. You got me on that. I'm gonna, I'll toss it back to you, Brown. You got some thoughts. Yeah. One last thing I would ha- uh, have to say, and also, I mean, this is kind of like also a win on my part, was like, the uh, British uh, Homeland Security Office. These were just some hardcore motherfuckers. <laughs> like, I mean, it was awesome to see them, like, grab that dude's laptop and run through the airport and just, like, toss it out of one of the uh, walkways to the airplane and just see it blow up. But also, when they gave that order, it's like, leave, uh, leave no evidence, and then they just, like, double tap the IRA girl in the room. I was like, whoa, that's some cold shit for an agency to do. Yeah, that was kind of... I'm a little fucked up that they actually showed that. Yeah. Um, they could have also left that ambiguous. To, they they could have. They chose to show it, but they could have just, like, we could have leave that here and be like, oh, did they kill them? Did they, who's going to bring them to justice? But showing almost somebody being executed, that, that's kind of yeah. a, little, that's a, little, that's a little cold. And, and yeah, my, my criticism on that is if you see show, like, a counterterrorism agency being this, hardcore about how they get their business taken care of uh where it's pretty jarring when you see it that at the end the head of the counter uh terrorism agency goes uh when they're like should we go ahead and apprehend uh jackie chan they're just like i think he did some good for us today and then they walk away and i'm like what the fuck there's no way in hell that you set yourself up to be an agency that fights Counterterrorism or fights terrorism very hardcore, and then you're just like, oh yeah, this guy, fuck it. No, they, yeah, they didn't. Walk away. They didn't let him walk away though. They said keep I mean, an eye on keep him. Keep eyes on him, but they're just like, I think he did some, some good for us today. Yeah, <laughs> well, such, it's terrible. Not good. They what? It's still there. I don't know. Uh, I, I was the message, listening. The, the big message that you said. I was like, that's not a. That's not a good luck. It, it's not a good luck to... to Save it for the sequel. You're saying... You know, right, oh right. God. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a sequel to this one. Um, so, so a, a couple things. Uh, I thought Brosnan had a terrible Irish accent. Um, apparently, he is Irish. I literally looked that up, and it was it was go- it was trash. Um, I, the biggest thing for me was... Well, besides the unnecessary in- incest, you could have just written that off as like a family friend. Make it. Didn't have to be his nephew. Yeah, it was. It was a little bit weird. Oh, oh. even Jackie Chan and his friend. I was like, wait. No, no, no. It was. It was definitely a little bit weird that it was like you. You could have even if that's how it was in the book. You could have rewritten that. Um, yeah. the, for me, the biggest thing was that like the motivations didn't make sense. It felt like Jackie Chan just like picked a random guy and was like, "I'm gonna harass." Out of all the politicians in Ireland. I'm going to harass this guy. And he kind of ended up being right, but like he really didn't like, he didn't like get any leads out of it. You know, it was kind of just him hanging around that he like figured this stuff out. Uh, 
it just didn't it didn't feel like there was any reason that he picked him or it wasn't strong enough. I know he has the IRA connection. I know he's like this this minister, but like the the fact that he kept on hammering home and then literally didn't even try another lead. He was like, "Nope, this is the one place I'm going to look at. I'm never leaving here and until this guy gives me the answer." And because it's a movie, it all ended up working out. But like Come on, like show him do something else and figure out, hey, maybe this guy was lying to me at first and then bring him back in. It, it was this like weird stubbornness. Um, I think we're missing a montage there or something to like some sort of like nightly binge and him like emailing, seeing him call. I think it'll be interesting just to give us three minutes of seeing Jackie Chan go through a, to a bunch of different people. And yeah. just kind of work his way up. And seeing like you, you have that you know that uh, diagram you see on the wall like newspaper yeah. and everything. Yeah, and he's the yeah. mis- you know. I think we missed a two minute scene for that, and that would have made it a, a little bit more helpful to get that motivation there. Besides just turning on the TV, seeing the only like stereotypical Irish person I know, and says, "You know what? That guy did it." And then assuming that that like that's yeah it's so funny yeah, kind of yeah. I'm pretty and- sure there's more more than one. Po- sin fine politician from Northern Ireland in Parliament. <laughs> right, and it wasn't. It wasn't even like runtime. Like, wasn't this movie only an hour and a half long? Yeah, yeah they, 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 they it could was have. Two hours, one fifty three. I think it was one fifty three. Yeah, I felt like it, it ran shorter. Um, Not me. <laughs> definitely ran for one fifty three. That's that's fair. But uh, um, the, uh, even on the other side, I felt like. I felt like Pierce Brosnan's motivations were explained, but were way too late. Like you, you kind of didn't know, and they re- they played up the gray aspect of his character, but it was like almost to a confusing point where you're like, I don't know if he's doing this because he's a bad guy or a good guy, and now I'm just confused because I don't know how this other ambiguous motivation character in Jackie Chan is gonna. Re-. It was like they were kind of two massless objects trying to orbit each other, but neither one had any mass, so neither one had any gravity, so they couldn't actually pull each other into any sort of orbit to have any sort of confrontation. Um, They were just kind of smashed together there. Um, And I think it really, it was a detriment that you just had no idea where any of these characters were coming from until like like an hour and 20 minutes into this thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was the big one for me. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kyle? I'll just jump right in right after because my negative overlaps with yours so much. It's that you have motivation. I had ambiguity. Uh, like I said, it was 75% into the movie before I actually knew if I should like Jackie Chan for what he's doing because it came off ambiguous, like ambiguous enough whether or not Pierce Brodman's character did or did not know or had anything to do with it. But even then, then they're like, all right, he did kind of, he wanted Bomb's place because it would help him politically, but he didn't want to hurt anybody. And then he's being double crossed, and his nephew is sleeping with his wife, and his wife is mad at him because of something. Her brother. About her brother died? Yeah, like years ago. Yeah. And just, just mentioned, but not until then. Not like a fully like realized or like, you know, just brought out thing. So I get 80% of the movies like, I think I get it now. I think, yeah, Jackie Chan's character just wants these answers, but so did Pierce Brosnan, and then Pierce gets it, gives it to Jackie. Jackie goes on his own way, kicks the ass that he needs to, but then he also comes back and he's like, by the way, Pierce Brosnan, actually, no, you're still an asshole and a bad guy. <laughs> now you're a terrorist. And, I just said this to Twitter. And so, oh, like, shit. Yeah, yeah, I got to, like, 80, 85%. I was like, all right, I think I had to figure it out, and then that last, like, three minutes, I was like, no, it's still wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was terrible, and we're not even, like, we shouldn't feel that good about what Jackie did, it, it, in the sense of just, like, survey him, but don't arrest him yet. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's kind of, <clears throat> kind of weird. And then his other character, like, Lamb, who, like, was a good friend of his, and I think I missed the flashback scene, which explains, like, their history together a little bit. No, we didn't. And we, like, missed his wife and children. Nope. Nope. No. You didn't miss I had anything. It just looks like after all that, he's gonna get laid. I'm glad they didn't go that that no, route. I mean, completely. like there was, yeah, we, we, didn't, we didn't any information about. All right, she yeah. came back, saw his wounds. What she didn't watch the news? She doesn't know. Like, just gave like, him a sloppy back. kiss. 
Yeah, Sugar and Jackie Chan have like contractually obligated coaches in this movie contract. Poor Buck fell down the stairs again. Like, and then we close on that because I don't know who's an asshole and who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. Everyone's dead. Yeah. Well, I mean, arguably though, he only killed four people in this movie. Yeah, it's true. Like, he goes out of his way to sort of like spare everybody else, and then all of a sudden he kills everybody at the end, the other people at the end of the movie. It's like, well, what was the point? Well, he didn't really have a choice then, because well, he was he, cornered in the room and he was being shot at by four people with split no, automatic no, rifles. I think he <laughs> only, his goal was to kill yeah. just the people who killed his daughter. I think it would have just made more sense if he just killed everybody that he encountered. In the room. It would have been overkill, but to me, it would have been, it would have made more sense if he was just like, oh, you're the same way he's just like, give me the names. Like, you're Irish, you must well, know someone in the he, IRA. He basically, like, <laughs> triples a good a few people. Yeah. He blew up the car the guy was in. I mean... Yeah, he's fine. He was blinking. We talked about no, his, his leg was not okay, That's bro. Right. Bruce Bolton's face was pretty fucked up. The little cuddle rug that he had that's hidden under the leaves. Oh, my God. Wait, oh, oh, you oh, by the leg. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. That was great. I love that. Guy trips on some wire, perfectly hits his head, knocks him out. <laughs> he has a little cuddle leaves rug that goes over. I was like, I need more of that. I really need more. Of that. I wish that every like kill in the movie was him like, like sliding a blanket over somebody when everyone else wasn't looking. <laughs> uh, that, was, that was a great moment. Ooh, the nail part fucked me up. Like that was like, oh, what? Yeah. yeah like, Ugh. Uh, okay, let's keep getting to our criticism. I'm tossing it over to uh, Abbott. What you got? Uh, yeah, I mean, just kind of overlap with what everybody said. Like motivations were a little cloudy. Um, I loved the fact that it was Jackie Chan versus. James Bond, but we never really got the payoff of them having any sort of physical confrontation. Like, they sort of have that one tense scene where Jackie Chan holds a gun to his head and it's like, okay, here's, you know, something might happen, and it doesn't really. He whips him in the face with a gun, that's about it. Like, and then at the end of the movie, when he confronts him finally in, like, the, the secret hotel room, and, like, you think, like, finally, after all this, all the build-up to them being like, oh, James Bond, you have to go back to your IRA ways. Like, you have to become, like, the street tough. Like, you have to, you know, balls to the wall, anything to get shit done. And he still just kind of, like, presses a button and just kind of, like, grimaces. And that's it. Like, I wanted, like, a bare fist boxing match between the two of them. Like, I wanted to see both of them and express how angry they were. Because Jackie Chan lost his child. James Bond's wife's cheating on him. Like, all of his partners are screwing him over. He's kind of losing his political career. He's, like, basically losing all of his power, he's losing his manliness, and, like, just, that should have come to a head, but there was no payoff. It was just kind of like, boop, movie over, movie ends. Yep. Also, sloppy kiss. Sloppy kiss. Yeah. Um, a kiss is great. Jackie Chan did not consent. <laughs> Jackie Chan. <laughs> that was the Happy Peacock. That was that maneuver. So we did Happy figure Peacock. out what the sequel's going to be about. No, <laughs> no, I don't want a sequel, man. But also, Jackie Chan, like, like, just abused two dogs in the movie. And I'm like, Jackie Chan's such a nice guy. Why would he, like, the one dog he put to sleep and the other dog, well, he didn't kill him. He just, like, knocked him out. Oh, what <laughs> dog does not like Also, when they showed that scene, Jackie just walks up to the dog and just, like, back chops its neck. <laughs> I, I would have I would have turned on Jackie Chan immediately if he killed that dog. I would have been like, let's go, Team Brosnan. I thought he did. I was, like, legitimately like, all right, uh, let's go IRA. <laughs> that, that, was a, that, that was a great I like the building of the tension in that scene because Pierce Brosnan exhausted he's exhausted like he's like you know what I was about to go to sleep he calls his dog and his dog doesn't move and everybody in the theater is like no Holy fucking shit. way yeah. he didn't do it the dog doesn't move and Pierce, uh, Pierce Brosnan's like oh shit and he's like he's sleeping <laughs> but then the other one at the end of the movie he takes the landlord, landlord lady's dog because, like, do we ever see her? Did she get killed in, like, the gunfight, or is she, like... Oh, well, the building... Straight up stole her dog. Well, yeah. apparently the building was secure, and there's nobody to be in the building except the, the um, sort of small family that walks in the building. So it's those two people. But then the, the manager of the, the, the landlord there, is in yeah. the building also. So it's like, who's secure in this building? Why did he take that dog? Yeah, well, it's had to be for a cover. I, I'm I, well, he was going to hold the dog in front of bullets. Like, yeah. what, like, but then he leaves it in a bus stop. I also love the fact that he's like, oh, empty your bag. They turn on his bag. He, they they, they sort of sorting through all the tools. There's a wrench. Oh, well, there's a gun right there. Like, yeah, what? what plumber have you not <laughs> met that doesn't carry a gun? With the fucking silent. Around it, I was like, <laughs> the only thing stopping it back out with a gun is a plumber with a gun. 
that's true. That's true. Uh, what else you got? Um, I mean, that's about it. I mean, there were uh, the the motivations were kind of cloudy, and the uh, confusion over who was a good guy, who was a bad guy. Um, and really, towards the end, like it was a fun movie to watch, but then you sort of pick out all the holes. And I think going back to what a lot of you guys have already said is that I feel like some of the things that were very heavily implied but not successfully conveyed in the movie could have been entire chapters in the book. Mm -hmm. Like these montages we're saying could have helped to like explain certain motivations or certain things better throughout the film was probably like a chapter that was not included or may have been cut. Like I'd be interested to see this movie when it comes out on like video on demand or DVD if there's like bonus scenes that were like cut out. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there was one spot in the movie that definitely felt like that because there's a spot in this movie where Jackie Chan disappears for 30 minutes. <laughs> and it's all about the relationship between the nephew and the, the wife. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was strange. That was definitely strange. And that's bit. where it really started to feel like Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were supposed to came out and sabotaged everything. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that was that was pretty much all I had. I still enjoyed the movie, but there was it wasn't a perfect movie. It wasn't a great movie, but it was it was okay. Yeah, yeah. Mocha, what you got for me? Uh, so I definitely agree with with that last point that you mentioned, Abbott, about how I'm despite despite the fact that I didn't really enjoy this movie overall, I am a bit interested in seeing the book uh, or reading the book rather. <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> Here you go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I am somewhat interested in reading the book because the biggest standout flaw for this movie to, uh, for me was that it's individual uh, like narrative elements, the different plot lines, whether it be Jackie Chan and his background with the U.S. Um, you know, with the U.S. Secret Service or not Secret Service, the U.S. government, um, whether it be the relationship between the IRA versus the Brits, as well as the internal drama of the IRA and Brits working together. The rogue elements in the IRA, like every, there were so many different plot threads here that should have been compelling if they were given any sort of real meaningful focus, but none of them were, and as a result, they all felt flat, and none of them were really compelling to me during the movie. Um, if it, I would love to see what the book, how the book fleshes these things out, because seeing what the inner workings are of the High Council of the IRA and how they go about um, how they're going about the situation mm-hmm. um, actually sounds like like would be an interesting read. Unfortunately, though, not too interesting as a movie, at least not in the length they gave it. Um, yeah, wait, did you say it fleshes things out or fleshes things out? I think you need to stop drinking out of the I said both. <laughs> yeah, Mocha. <laughs> Mocha, I didn't, even, I didn't even think about that. Like, so those four-minute scenes that kind of just went nowhere and explained nothing would probably be more fleshed out as a full chapter. Like, they almost shot it like they were chapters in a book, except, like, you cannot possibly jam that much information into a scene. That's a good call out. I, I'd be interested to see if I enjoyed the the book a lot more than the movie. Yeah, it seemed like there that there that there was that there might have been some really rich drama there, but it just didn't come out in the film itself. There was a lot of were leaning on the implication, but there's not that back without providing that information. It's just not there. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as the the rest of the film goes, I think everyone in this room. I and mean, everyone who went to see this movie went in there with at least a part of their of uh, them wanting to see a Jackie Chan uh, kung fu action movie. And this movie had a fight scene, and that was pretty much it. Um, the opening or the beginning fight scene where the IRA members first go after Jackie Chan at his B&B was awesome. It was exactly what I was looking for in this movie. It got me really stoked for what was going to was going to come. It was intense hand to hand fighting. It was Jackie Chan doing what Jackie Chan does best, which is improvising and using the elements around him to uh, fight, uh, defend, and escape. Uh, it was really, as I believe Warren mentioned earlier, brutal. Like We saw Jackie Chan get thrown downstairs. We saw him get kicked and punched and hurt, which is you know a calling card of a lot of his, act- his, his martial art films. You often see him get hurt, and that's part of the draw of watching Jack- Jackie Chan um, have fight scenes in the first place. But then that was it. The rest of the movie was all this guerrilla warfare. Um, and there was one more sort of fight scene between him and the incestuous nephew um, later on, but that was it. And I felt like that—that that was a big letdown for me. Yeah, I really uh, liked the fight scene with him, and the nephew, because wait, uh, wait. I mean, it was fast and quick, and you expect that from two people that are special forces—is that they know their shit. So 
it's going to be like whoever makes the first mistake is what it's going to end that. And uh, it ends up really well be, that he uses like a makeshift knife to, to stop him at the end, which is really cool. So I agree. Yeah, you're right. It should have been like a quicker, a quick fight. But the fact that that was the only other fight we got, it just wasn't uh, fulfilling enough for me. You um, also had a whole gunfight at the end. I know it's not a Jackie Chan kung fu fight, but it was a pretty impressive gunfight in a small room. Yeah, that was an action scene, but it wasn't a fight scene. Um, and that's what I'm speaking, uh, speaking to specifically. Like when I see Jackie Chan, like like when I see Jackie Chan in, a- in action, I want to see him using his body to like to jump around and escape fight. What with- fist to face? Yeah. And you know what? The gun scene was cool, and that's fine. But again, it was just a lot of. It was a much slower, much more, uh, a much slower movie in terms of the action, um, or at least there was larger gaps between where the action scenes were, and that's definitely not how it was marketed. Um, which is on the other side of where my ire comes out for that, because you know they, the trailers for this movie made it seem like it was going to be a nonstop fight, um, which it wasn't. And I don't think that Dennis Ray makes it bad, but it was deceiving and set the wrong expectations for myself as a viewer. I imagine several other people as well. Um, what, what it's interesting that you brought up the fight scene with the um, with the incestuous nephew because <laughs> <laughs> I like that you don't call him just nephew; it's just the incestuous nephew. <laughs> what is, what is incestuous nephew? Um, but curly haired British guy that'll be in Avengers soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, so regarding that character, there was, so there's two things. One, in that fight specifically, there were a few weird cuts in the movie and weird edits, and the worst one for me was in that scene, because Jackie Chan and, um, the other's nephew were having a fight, and they're just going back and forth, slashing at each other, everything's cool, the nephew falls on top of Jackie Chan and catches himself as Jackie holds up the pointy stick that just barely stabs him in the throat a little bit, and then... It just cuts to him being like tied up next to a tree at night, and like, we didn't see anything come up, like come out from that. Did Jackie Chan say check? And then if he go ah oh, shucks, and then he just let him get his hands tied. Like what what happened there? There had to be more struggle. Why weren't we allowed to see that? Maybe it was just cut for time. But again, that's more that's more like fighting and action that we didn't get to see. Mike, it just felt like a really weird cut. Uh, there was another weird cut that I forgot to mention. He when he went to the bathroom to blow up that like bathroom bomb. Um, he like looks kind of around the corner and then they do a quick cut of him like on the other side of the room and then it shows him enter the stall. It was, it was literally just like they couldn't decide whether they wanted to like do a quick cut to like him checking out the bathroom and then you know when they were, uh, he was making the bomb itself, like they do that showing him put every little thing, but they, they, the whole rest of him looking around the stall, they didn't edit like that and it felt really out of place. Yeah, I agree. There were some really strange choices when it came to the editing and the cuts they made um, that were, you know, took me even further out of the movie um, than all of its other you know, flaws had, had done at, already at that point. Um, with the nephew, also, was just funny to me. I know you guys mentioned earlier how it's silly that after escalating from like 5 to 10 to 20 to 50 people and this guy down, they call in just one tracker. And because he knows how to track, that's all he, they need. Like, they just need to find him, and then the one guy can beat him. Um, it was really funny to me that they did the, the, the classic tracking trope that you see in any movie, TV show that involves somebody who <laughs> Pick up leaves. <laughs> yeah, they walk. <laughs> they find a spot, they touch a thing on the ground and rub their fingers together. Like, this guy was brief. He said, oh, he dug a hole in, with punji sticks. He, they say it, fucking punji sticks. Um, so he knew that a guy stepped, stepped on fucking nails in the woods. He goes to the woods and bends down and touches the blood. And, like, feels the blood as if he's feeling the direction that he could possibly have gone in afterwards. And then looks to the side and goes off in a specific direction. Like, it's just nonsense. No one does that. No one would do that. Like, <laughs> oh, blood. Yeah. Like, yeah. Halloween blood. Yeah, right. It was just really, it was just really silly. Uh, and I couldn't help but, but notice that. Um, I agree that his tunnel vision for Pierce Brosnan seemed really odd. Um, especially when there were plenty of other people involved that he could have hunted. Even, even just looking at the individuals he interacted with on his hunt for Pierce Brosnan. There's a scene where he's trying to go back to the B&B where he was at, and there's a guy in a car, like, on a stakeout in front of the building. So he walks in, opens his door, which was fortunately unlocked. Yeah. And he hits him in the face. That's right. And then that's it. He just walks away. Instead of, I don't know, maybe taking that guy and trying to get answers, asking him about names, like he kept doing for just Pierce Brosnan. Um... You know, like, there were just, like, it also struck me as odd, too, that we were introduced in the beginning of the film 
to the IRA council. It's like 12 old dudes that are all part of this organization. And Jackie Chan never even considers going, uh, like looking for or going after any other person that could possibly have anything to do with the IRA whatsoever. All he did was a Google search to find out that this dude used to be tied to the IRA. I guarantee you that Wikipedia article he was looking at had links to other dudes that were in the IRA. I'm sure. Those your names. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it just seemed odd to me that when it didn't work out the first time, he didn't try like any other option. He just became super crazily focused, which maybe that's an element of the book. Maybe, you know, it's a negative part of his character in the, in the book, how he gets this kind of like weird focus on Pierce Brosnan. I don't know, but it just struck me as odd. Um, the functionality of technology was also really weird. It usually only worked when it was convenient. Um, the big standout moment for this for me was near the climax of the film when the British... Um, counterterrorism uh, uh, agents are getting ready to um, siege the hotel where the individuals are, where the rogue IRA agents are staying. They have a device that shows all the bodies that are in the hotel as green dots. And we know that it's just everybody because the manager of the hotel and Jackie Chan walk up and they see the dots on the screen. Oh, who are these two dots? Hold up, don't go in yet. Then, after all the chaos ensues, they all go in, and Jackie Chan literally just walks past them holding the dog, and no one notices, and no one checks the screen, and no one wonders why there's a green dot moving away from the, the place where all the other dots just died. It just, like, struck me as very, very, very like, odd. <laughs> so, so silly. Or, like, the scene with the um, the drone. The drone, to me, almost felt like the Dusex mocking up the, the eagles from... <laughs> it just shows up it's like oh hey we knew you guys were working together the whole time because we have robots surrounding they, your house and they, oh this drone that's very fucking obvious you can just look up and see oh this weird it just pops up right? yeah, I like that was just five feet away from them <laughs> yeah it was like, like those things are loud like a rock. they would have gone outside and they would have heard let's go inside guys <laughs> they, they did nail the security camera systems in England though like those yeah. things are that comprehensive and like they totally, in fact, one thing I'll applaud them is they, uh, at one scene, one of the texts was like, yeah, this will take longer. It'll probably take, a, you know, uh, like a week longer than what you're asking for, but we can do it, which they didn't immediately CSI it where they had to make a GUI for the mainframe so they can hack into the VNet or something. What was that like terrible line from like, uh, like CSI or something? It was like, you know, it was like an old person trying to describe coding to something, but uh, they actually like took the, the surveillance aspect and actually made it pretty real life. Like this movie couldn't have existed in the States because we just don't have that type of public yeah. surveillance system. Yeah. We got Skynet working. We're working on Skynet. I'm looking for Star yeah. Wars first. So ultimately, I just want to end off by kind of echoing what I had said earlier. The end of the film was way too weak um, for everything that we saw and all the buildup. The fact that it did end with just Jackie Chan saying, I have this incriminating photo of you. Like, press this button and send it send it yourself. And Peter Brothers just being like, all right, yeah, here, send, boom. Like, it just, it was really weird. And and also that final line where Jackie Chan just says, now the internet goes. And it's like, ah, come on, like, <laughs> How many followers do you have, Quan Chi, with your happy feet? I doubt you have more than two. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see the RTs on that. Uh, all photo. that, all it takes is one to go viral. Look, look what happened to Beyonce's uh, photo from a couple of years ago. Yeah, Beyonce has more than two followers. Uh, you don't know that. <laughs> I do because I follow her on three different accounts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it should have it should have culminated in something. We should have seen Pierce Brosnan pushed to the edge and just completely fed up with how everything had just gotten screwed and saying, "Fuck it! If you want me to be that the villain, the villainous IRA terrorist, I'll show you who that man was." And then do something about Jackie Chan standing right in front of him. Have a have an old man fight. Duke it out. <laughs> like, let's see that happen. I I wanted something to come out come, more come out of that other than like a weak uh, final line and then a prolonged, like, happy, like, crying, happy ending scene. It was like the end of the toothpaste, too. It's like, oh, there's something else in there, I just can't get to it. It was exactly like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I felt like, I, it's, it's interesting, because when a movie based on a book 
is bad. It usually doesn't get me interested in reading that book. But I feel like I see enough disparate elements that should have been good in this film where, I, where it's actually driving me towards the pages now. So, um, so at least there's that. Well, uh, I mean, I'll end it off here. I mean, everybody's already talked about. I'm not going to, like, uh, try to bring up anything else and anything that pops up. But I guess one of the biggest criticisms, besides all of the other things that has already been said, um, it was really difficult to understand Jackie Chan and a lot of this movie. Um, his accent is very, very thick, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know what word you just said there, so I can only assume, but I'm like, hmm. Okay, I'm just gonna let it go. He also didn't, he doesn't talk too much in his movie or say too many different words. Uh, but like, I was like, man, like, I wonder if like subtitles would work, but that also maybe not, may not work. But I don't know. that's like the only other sort of criticism I have of sometimes some of the words that he actually said just kind of get lost in his accent. I don't know about that. So, I don't know. Also, I don't think I've ever seen a movie where Jackie Chan doesn't smile at least once. Yeah, like, yeah. even if it's more serious roles, he at least like finds time to smile. He never smiles. Yeah, he, I'll give it to him for that. He was really, like, he was pathetic to look at. And I mean that in a good <laughs> way. No, I mean that in a good acting way. Like, most of the movie, he has, like, his eyes are wet with, you know, the tears that he's holding back, dealing with the fact that he's lost everything he's ever, he's ever like, really loved in his life. And seeing that sort of consistent drama from Ducky Chad was cool and just reminded me, um, and hopefully other viewers, that he's not just a guy who punches and kicks. He can also he also has a pretty dynamic range as an actor. He can maintain that moisture in his eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, one last criticism I'm going to add to this is um, so I've uh, I've been in a lot of different forests around the world in my life, and um, and the North Ireland Northern Ireland forest I haven't been there personally, but it, the, from here it looks like it's thick vegetation. It's got some rough terrain. Uh, but one thing I can definitely tell you is something that actually travels really well in cold and windy areas is smoke. And so if they're wondering, like, where the hell is Jackie in that forest? Hey, look at the tree line. Do you see that smoke? Maybe we should check there. That would be the first spot you want to go to. <laughs> but again, though, no, they, 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 there was a scene in which they went directly to the smoke and he wasn't there. Well, he, set, he knew that. Yeah, yeah, he no, yeah. yeah, Jackie did that on purpose, though. Yeah. To get I mean, him to come over. But he would still come back there and I'm like that was the same area you saw him like heal his wound and actually take a nap while Pierce Brosnan was dealing <laughs> with his nephew and wife. And uh, he never left that spot. It's someplace he always came back to eventually. But yeah, if he knew they were coming, he would definitely duck out of there. Hmm. That was also the vibe that I got. Like he didn't really do a good job. Besides like the far off when you actually saw the, the the width of the woods from far off, the shots that were actually taken of them running around and fighting the woods, that, to me at least, looked like the woods behind my house at home. It seemed like a really small wooded area. It didn't seem like a dense forest. It didn't seem like it would have been hard to find him in there either way. Like, I don't feel like the set of the woods was well was well conveyed. Like, I don't think it was supposed to be that sparse. I, I mean, think it's, it's, probably, just... it's probably the same forest they use in Game of Thrones and... Those forests are well manicured. They'll even take the brush off the ground. So that you'll just see, like, tree, 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 and, like, even lines and stuff. Well, he did a good... He was able to hide that van with, like, a tree and a half. Yeah. yeah. He which, did hide stuff really Which long. never came remember. back to anything. Like, we didn't even see that van. That's we didn't, true. We didn't see point? him drive off. We didn't, like... What was the point of hiding it? Why did he get the, why did he get the fake van and no. throw him off from the other van if he was just going to hide it anyway? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. I have no idea. I don't know. And with that, let's get into our great lasting thoughts of The Foreigner. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to Brylan. Brylan, what's your grade and what would you uh, kind of list for The Foreigner? Ultimately, I'm going to give this movie a B. Uh, it's a fun, dumb action movie. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll also say it's it's not a Jackie Chan film. That's like probably the biggest criticism is... Yeah, it's Jackie Chan doing something different, but as Mocha pointed out, that, I mean, it doesn't really have a Jackie Chan feel, and, the, like, having him leave the movie for 30 minutes, this becomes like a Pierce Brosnan movie, like him dealing with juggling politics versus his family life, and that's kind of 
how the movie pivots its focal point to. And that's the kind of more interesting part. Uh, but overall, it was fun. It had some very solid action, and um, it moved really fast. All right. You got a B for Brown and blew it. What would you? So, I gave my, this movie a C-. minus. It kind of just existed in my life for a little bit of time. Uh, we've seen utter embarrassments of movies like um, Transformers. Uh, what else? What did I give a D to? It was like slight. It was the only reason I didn't fail it was because Transformers came out this year, and this movie is not close to those. So I couldn't, in good faith, give it uh, a D or an F. Um, but it just didn't really do anything. It, it just power. It just it it just happened. Yeah, probably. I didn't feel like either way. I wasn't blown away by any of it. But I also like didn't. I wasn't laughing at how awful it was. C minus. I probably. I wouldn't recommend seeing this movie. I'd. I'd say if it's on maybe on TNT, uh, one of our sponsors in thirty years, um, maybe check it out on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, other than that, I probably. I wouldn't like search this movie out. Cool. So we got C minus for blue. Pop. I'll give it a C. It's a movie. I watched it. I was entertained, mostly because I was. I was drawn in by how much I didn't understand. But there was action, but the entire time I was like, I just don't know, should I enjoy that Jackie Chan is doing this, or is he an asshole? Or is, you know, James Bond an asshole? Wasn't sure, and by the time it was, then it even flipped, and it just didn't play with those kind of things, which are usually great plot twists. Usually the ambiguity of characters and where they stand is something that keeps you involved. Instead, I was just like, who is anyone here doing or related to anyone else? Why is any of this happening? It actually, in a way, made me think of Burn After Reading. And at the end of it, they all killed each other? <laughs> just cover it up. <laughs> no one needs to know about this. <laughs> and just move on. And like, how they end the movie, just like, this sounds like just sheer incompetency. Just, yeah, cover it up, we're done, move on. But instead, it wasn't a punchline that made the whole movie that funny. It was just a falling flat in space. So I'll give it a C. I watched the movie, I was entertained, but I don't have anything I took away from it that I enjoyed other than seeing Jackie Chan still having it. Cool. So we got a C from uh, Kyle. Uh, I'm going to give it a B minus. Uh, I do love Jackie Chan and I do love James Bond uh, and I feel like they both acted their pants off they were really good and the scenes they did have together even though they weren't fighting scenes were great like I think they're you know the, the, the stress and the tension that they provided was entertaining and overall the movie was kind of like um, it was sort of like the devil's own that movie with uh, Harrison Ford and Brad Pitt but just with more kung fu which is something that back in my mind that I realized that I always wanted but never thought of until I saw this movie so it was enjoyable it did have a lot of plot holes there's a lot of things that we discussed tonight it's like well yeah what the fuck like why did that happen or why did that happen or at the same time like Kyle's saying like is he the asshole is he the asshole and then I got up and left the theater I was like wait am I the asshole why did I pay to see this movie but I still enjoyed it so I'm giving it a B minus you are an asshole yep <laughs> maybe we are all assholes well not all just majority of us here right. yeah six out of seven uh, so, yeah, B minus from uh, Abbott. Mocha, what do you got? I am going to go ahead and give this film a D. Um, it was really disappointing to have spent money to see this film. Um, and I don't think I would have felt good about my time had I torrented it or watched it on Netflix. Um, <laughs> you know, Jackie Chan was solid throughout it, but I think this was a film that, that had a lot of disparate elements that could have that should have been compelling, and somehow they managed to let them all fall flat. And that uh, is more upsetting to me than anything because it feels like it should have been a, a better, told us a better story. Yeah. Um, I am actually looking forward to reading the book now, so there's a silver lining there. Um, but as for my my rating, it's going to be a D, and it should not be a movie that you spend any, any sort of money or actual lifetime on. Yeah. So we got a D from Oka, uh, and I guess I'll end it off with saying that didn't like this movie. Um, my only uh, thing is that I watched this movie as a matinee with uh, some award points, so it only cost me $2. So 
So I wasn't too upset about it, but I was still very upset about it. Um, as his badass person, he did do a lot of dumb stuff. Jackie Chan did a lot of dumb stuff. He's supposed to be like super, super smart, yet they tracked him pretty easily to the Airbnb immediately. And he was still there packing, which is kind of weird. Um, yeah, I didn't like this movie. I got to give this movie a D at all, uh, I, entirely. Like, it's, I'm surprised you guys are giving it B's and even C's. I get the C's, but some B's in this movie is kind of surprising, but do you? Um, it just wasn't good. Like, out of all this, it, this story wasn't good. I, it, I look at it this to the point where I'm like, man, I don't want to learn any more about this. Like, I don't want to learn any more anything about this movie. Um, just because it really felt a, a bit too targeted. We talked about it, but he really focused a bit too much on literally one person that he saw talking on TV that he assumed that's where we have to go from of he's guilty. So this guy had to have killed my daughter or know the people who killed my daughter sort of thing. Um, and I just felt it was too forced. A bit too forced, um, too much. And I think somebody said it pretty well, like, well, Jackie Chan was a terrorist also. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's very true. Like, and it's not, you know, it's not in the good sort of uh, way. And I think another thing we actually kind of glazed over is that it, at one point it did seem like they glorified a little bit of, like, this bomb making was a, a bit of a, um, an interesting sort of concept of uh, a battery and a, and a laptop that you can necessarily make and get by the scanners and, they kind of like talked about that a little bit as if there was something good about that. And I was, I'm always a bit cautious about anything at all uh, of that. Anything to do with like bombs on planes or anything. So, um, yeah, it kind of stinks. So, uh, yeah, got to get this movie a day. And with that, I want to say thanks, guys. We have done it. We have completed it. And we are the Down to Fun Podcast. We can find a bunch of our work. We're on iTunes, so make sure you can read us on iTunes as well. We like any and all reviews. Kind of hang out. Feel free to kind of email us. We're going to get into all of that. But I'm excited for all of our guests and everybody to be here. So I really, really appreciate everybody hanging out with us on this late night. It's like 3, 4 in the morning here. Um, and so super pumped about that. And uh, Mr. Bryland, where can we find more of your work? Uh, you can find me living in the woods on Twitter at Brylund, B-R-I-L-U-N-D. Um, I'm also the host of the Games Cast, so twitch.tv slash Down and Podcast. Just started playing through the Destiny storyline uh, today, so I am why I waited. I mean, who wants to play a first-person shooter with a game controller when you can play it with a keyboard and mouse and have better graphics? So, PC all the way. All right. <laughs> Blew it, the shredder. Sorry, the left shredder. The mm. guitar. Yeah. Blew it. Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> you, you're falling apart on me. Um, yeah, so you can find me at either My News Music or My News Band on most social media platforms. Uh, we have a show right before Halloween. So if you are in the continental United States or Ireland, uh, please feel free to come over. Uh, you have some time to arrange your, your belongings and your, tell your family that you love them, but you need to see this rock show. Um, we're running a special promotion. Um, the first about 130 people through the door that pay regular price get to see us. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's, yeah. That's a bro. That's, that's pretty solid. Um, I may or may not wear a costume. Uh, we're heavily leaning towards may not. So it's nothing special. Um... If you like reading campfire stories, you can call us up uh, and email us at Jesse likes kidnapping people and then telling them stories around a campfire uh, at gmail.com. Hello, Jesse photobombs at ynl.com. Thanks so much, Shredder. Uh, I want to say thanks so much for Abbott, for uh, Kyle, definitely being here, guys. We thoroughly appreciate kind of hanging out with us. Um, Abbott, where can you find more of your work? Oh, uh, yeah. You can uh, Google the Abs Man. Um, that is pretty much all my stuff out there. You'll find anything related to me, even some of my uh, really embarrassing work from uh, pre art school, uh, high school bullshit that I can laugh at nowadays. Uh, also, um, again, you can listen and pop a fear bone uh, here on the. Um, down front podcast that nice. you can listen to me there nice. uh, and also real, real quick I just want to give a, a, a shout out not a shout out I just want to uh, talk to Mr. Jackie Chan if you are listening to this podcast I don't want you to to take ill of some of these 
plebeians not enjoying your films, but um, we do love you and we would, would love to have you on the podcast someday. So Let's go to Rush Hour 4. Just Jackie Chan, just make better movies and they'll be fine. Right? Yeah, he's, you know, he's getting back into it. Yeah. Well, as always, thanks uh, so much for being here. Uh, toss it over to uh, Kyle, the better shredder, Kowalski. Uh, oh. and he's, he's the famous uh, Kyle Kowalski couch. Kowalski couch collection. You can find him on the internet sleeping soundly. Exactly. <laughs> on Instagram. You can absolutely find it there. Uh, beyond that, actually, curricularly, I am in a band called Active Observer who is about to go on tour. Uh, in the middle two weeks of November. We're going through the Midwest, like the Great Lakes area, as well as the Northeast. Um, so feel free to look us up on Actor Observer. You can find that on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, anything like that. And we're also, we have a song streaming right now on Revolver Magazine called Wellbeing. And there should be more releases to come in possibly the next couple days, depending on when this gets released, or it might already be out. Uh, but anyways, look, look us up via the social media. You'll find out where it all is. We're going on tour. Come see us if we're coming to your town. And also we have more to come for you. Nice. Well, thanks so much. We'll definitely make sure we put all that information in the show notes too so people can find out a lot more of your work. And you guys, this is six shows, so I definitely, definitely um, recommend checking out After Observer and checking out uh, my new uh, music as well. Uh, Mr. Mocha, Sexy Mocha Mike. The sexiest of mics I've ever seen in my life. Mm. Sexy Mike. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> thanks, Wes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, as per usual, you can find me on Twitter tweeting um, 140 characters, even though I have the 280 character uh, upgrade already. Too much. I know, too much. Yeah. I don't think I have to use this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sick rag, bro. You can find me there uh, at Mocha Mike LLI, as the Lord intended. Um, unfortunately, you cannot find me at, at Mocha Mike. Um, the individual who has that account is an elderly gentleman who doesn't know how to use the account. And in fact, much like Kwan Min, only follows two people. Um, one is a <laughs> to support, uh, the other one is uh, just a site that generates MASH memes. Uh, oh, wow. That's a throwback. <laughs> so, so for the time being, you can find me on Mocha Mike Alive. Don't tap me. Uh, also, find me on Instagram uh, at Mocha Mike, uh, where you can see some of my photography, and on Medium, medium.com slash at Mocha Mike, where you can see some long form reviews of films as well as uh, other articles based on topics that I find interesting. Cool. I mean, as always, it's great to have you on. It's great to have you on live. So, we always have a good time. So, I appreciate you hanging out and driving. And coming, excuse me, all the way up here from uh, New York. So I appreciate that. Glad to be here. Uh, and uh, we are the Downfront Podcast. You can find we have a bunch of stuff that's out there. So we're super, super excited about our next reviews. We're excited about Fear Bonus is coming up. I think we're getting to a really, really good couple months. So, you know, the end of October to November and December. So definitely kind of keep an eye out for that. We're going to be trying to put out a lot more content and a lot more stuff for you. And we have a special episode that's going to be next up. Um, so we're pretty excited about that, but, you know, obviously, no spoilers in there. I know you want it, but you're going to have to wait. Uh, so you can definitely find more of our work. So we have a, a Patreon, we have a Twitter, we have a Facebook, we have an email. Our email account is downinfrontpodcast at gmail.com. Um, our Facebook, so feel free to find us on our page. It's facebook.com slash downinfrontpodcast. Um, you have a Patreon, so if you definitely like it, you like what we're doing, you like to hear our voice, we have like small, like other oh, mini episodes and things like that we want to put out for our people. And just for one dollar, Bob, it's, that's a, that's a, that's the price of a Arizona sweet tea. I had sixteen of those when I was in Florida this past week. It was amazing. That's sixteen dollars. Well, no, it was Boga. <laughs> so eight dollars. Price is on the can, though. Price is on the can. Sometimes because they have it for fifty cents. So I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not sure. I was like, is this a dollar or is this 50 cents? I, I tell them that, but they're like, well, it's 50 cents. So I, was like, I used to live next to a bodega that would sell them for $2. Nah, fuck that. Yeah. Nah, that's, that's, right. that's why you just show them the can and say <laughs> the price is on the can. <laughs> but the price is on the can, though. Uh, definitely find us, patreon.com, size down to find podcast. We have a Twitter, so it's at underscore DAFP. Um, underscore DAFP you can follow me, tweet a bunch of things of polls different movies different thoughts but if you do want us to review something so feel free to email us downinfrontpodcast at gmail.com 
Uh, thanks so much. Find a lot of our work. We're going to be air and out all on the internet. And uh, we will say so long.